Now next player, got a pentakill in his first LCS season. One of two players to get a pentakill in EU and NA. And he was initially too young to compete in the LCS, so he was only allowed to play midway through the split. So the trap here is to say Reckless. Reckless. Hans Sommer. I would say Sven. Is that Berks? Jensen. This player won LCS MVP four times, and he has represented a single team for seven years as a player. And he is known for his Syndra. Brogan. He has been all pro, first team, six times. He has six LCS titles, and later in his career, known for his Zillion. Zerexen. Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, Bjergsen. Correct. Don't know why I guess Zerexen, actually. <laughs> so, next one. This is one of the few players to win both LEC and LCS. His most played champion is Zoe, which he was known for earlier in his career. And his in-game name is a partial rearrangement of his first name. Fibuven. He's called Fabian, no? So, a player that won both titles. Which mid laners did that? Luka Perkovic. Thanks. Thanks. This player has won LEC MVP as well. This player has a reputation for playing for his jungler, which has led to two of his teammates winning MVP awards mm. and has represented four different teams in the LEC. Jensen, but probably not, not him. So this player has qualified for the World Championship four times in five years, but has never made it to bracket stage. Represented both Fnatic and Cloud9 in the past, 1647. That must be really stupid to not get this. Okay, it's Niski, right? Oh, it's Niski? Niski. What is Niski's name, even? Ria Niski Yasin. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, but also I'm his teammate, so it's even worse, actually. And welcome everyone to the conclusion of the Mega Week here in the LEC 2024 Spring Playoffs. Today is Elimination Days as some, some teams will be sad, some teams will be glad. We'll see at the end of the day, we will lose two LEC teams and the first matchup we're gonna have. As we see the teams here entering the studio, is gonna be Team Heretics and SK Gaming. I'm Laure and I will be joined by GB and Ergon. How are you doing guys? Four days of esports, four days of yeah. the best league in Europe. And I've had the privilege of watching <laughs> from back home, and I, I just really enjoyed it. Yesterday in particular, I thought it yeah. was an absolute banger. The the games were so action-packed, so no, great playoffs so far. I like that. Best league in Europe. That I is like... a good way of tempering <laughs> the expectations. But we, yeah. we started like best league in the West, best league in Europe. We will reevaluate, of course, depending on how MSI goes. But first, we need to see who we send to MSI. And now we're going to take a look at the bracket as we saw G2 and BDS advancing yesterday to the best of five upper bracket final. Today we're going to have elimination series, of course. We're going to lose two teams and the rest will stay and keep their hopes to make it potentially to MSI, win the split, we'll see. What did we think of the games we had yesterday, guys? Because I think of El Clasico, I think of G2 versus Fnatic. We were hyped for a competitive game. I thought this game would be close and then we got a vintage version of 2018 and what this matchup had best to offer, yeah. sadly. I think uh, it was just super <laughs> exciting, right? Because there was so much skirmishing in the early game in both series, actually. In the G2 versus Fnatic, you had Caps playing as a Sol and just running the map as well on the Azir. And I think, yeah, uh, Volley Bear, so much fighting and neutral objective stacking. It was just a treat to watch. Yeah, I remember I went to the bathroom at around 18 minutes in the second game of Fnatic versus yeah. G2. I come back, games finish at 21 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> what? Well, it still looked a bit close with all the skirmishes, but suddenly yeah. G2 just fights them in their base and does what G2 does best, just finish the job. Quite a change of pace between between game one and game two, sadly. We'll see if this team can rematch, of course, later. Uh, the first series we had was BDS versus Vitality. 
not what I expected, but yet again, what did I expect? I don't even know. I was hyped for it in the beginning. <laughs> I thought the jungle matchup between Daklas and Shio was actually really interesting to watch. I thought Shio had a really good game against Team Redix in general, and the BDS defensive setup setting up for the jungles was really interesting. And I was curious to see how Vitality was going to tackle that. Mm -hmm. But I think the game turned a lot more sloppy than I at least had anticipated in the beginning. But it just goes to show that uh, there is still a big difference in some of our teams, and some of our teams still have a lot of issues that they need to iron out, especially VDS and Vitality. Yeah, and I especially think Vitality in particular, their mid game, I think their early game is some of the best in the league, maybe top two teams in the league alongside MDK. Um, but then you get the mid game and you get the throws in both game two and three, and it's just a shame. BDS as well, I think, have this meta seems to really suit them as well. With the reintroduction of Azir, the, the crit AD carries, the front to back, I think they, that's why they're having so much success currently in the playoffs. We saw their games versus Heretics, and I know that uh, Vitality was thinking we didn't see much of BDS. Now, after the game they played yesterday, winning yet again against Vitality, do we think they can make it as far as they did in Winter? I mean, I always think BDS is this kind of team that's incredibly stable, that will never push the ball too hard in terms of pushing a play too far. But I also think that's what's always going to make them only a stable team and never the team that's going to take the championship because when I see them, they are good uh, at fundamentals, mm -hmm. but they often also just drop the ball every now and again in a mid game. They'll have a high level play that they'll be outplayed on. And I'm hoping that they can continue to use this as a foundation where they become better. But right now, I still don't see them as a championship winning team. So far, Aragon, I feel like playoffs are going the same way we saw in Winter because it is the same matches as well. Yeah. How do we think of the team's progress, though, between Winter and Spring here for the games that we had already that were rerun? Yeah. It it definitely feels like I'm just looking at the bottom bracket with MDK running that miracle run through the yeah. bottom. And that was what stuck out to me in the winter. Um, and we're kind of getting that again, right? So maybe we'll see MDK shore up their issues and make it all the way. And on the other side, GV Heretics versus SK Gaming in a tough spot here. Not only because, well, either team losing gets eliminated, but also because Heretics has been rebuilding. If it doesn't work here, why did they do this? SK, though, stayed with the same team. If it doesn't work either, then what's next for I mean, them? that's my issue with finding these two teams at the bottom of the bracket again, because with SK, as you said, they stuck with their entire roster, and with sticking with that roster, you are expecting an improvement, but it either felt like they digressed or they stayed the same. I'm not seeing an improvement in SK, as I've seen with the other teams. For them today to be knocked out would be, I mean, it would be devastating. Uh, they're going to take a huge break again, and they're going to try and fix their issues, but the thing is, you've already had a lot of time with the same roster. You need to do better. And, and the same can be said for Team Heretics, though, in that same regard, because with the changes they came through with, it looked really good in regular season. I had higher expectation of, uh, of Team Heretics going mm -hmm. into these playoffs, but once again, finding them in this spot with all the changes they've had, I mean, they might have well, it's the same as if they feel perks if they get knocked out today yeah. again, right? So with that in mind, you need to see more from yep. these teams, and there's so many stakes for them going into this game. We were talking about stability and consistency when it comes to these teams, Aragon. Now it's about I don't know, finding the band-aid that's going to yeah. allow them to push further, I feel, because it doesn't feel like the fundamentals are solid enough for both teams. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm kind of disappointed in Team Heretics because I feel like towards the end of the regular season, they looked really, really good, especially in, in certain drafts they were playing. But yesterday, um, or the day before, rather, it just mm -hmm. felt like they their early games were not good enough for the drafts that they were drafting. They were drafting so much early skirmishing and just not getting enough off of it. You know, from the Volley Bear to the Varus down bot side, I feel like the onus is on you to uh, secure early leads, whether it's neutral objectives, dives, anything like this, and then propel the game forward. But it just wasn't enough to me. Yeah, you kind of see it on screen here as well. They they tried to run the Volleyball back two times, right? First they saw it, and then they got counterpicked by Jax, which I thought was really great by BDS, because then you couldn't skirmish into the enemy jungle if you had a, bar, but a prior bot lane. Uh, but my main concern then came in game two, where it was like, okay, sure, you decided to run it back with the Alista again, this time with the Callista, but we still didn't see any dive spot. We didn't see them play for it at all. So I, I, I expected more of this Volleyball, because we've seen how proactive it can be, yeah. but nothing was proactive about the gameplay we saw from, from Team Heretics in their first playoff Let's series. Let's check the jungle, maybe, because I think it's going to prove your points even more here in the non-impact of the jungle uh, on Yankos' side, which is strange, because when you look at regular season for Heretics, the amount of MVP he got, he was the maestro for the early game for Heretics, and he was the one leading the pace of the game. 
I don't like this. And I, mean, I, 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 I didn't like it either when I saw it. Like, you yeah. see, the, the, the biggest one for me is the kill plus assist at 14. It's only one for Jankos, and it is not to yeah. blame Jankos at all because I think he's one of the best junglers we have in Europe. But that also, that also puts higher expectations on yeah. him from my point of view, and he didn't do enough with it. Whereas Isma, on the other hand, while they lost their series, he was so proactive with his jungle pathing. A mid, 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 again and again and again. You saw him try to look for these creative gang patterns, and it worked for their early game. Yeah, and it feels like with SK, their playbook is you gank top or mid. Depending on how well a relevant trades top side, you can turn that into dives, um, bring up everyone like Niski as well, or you gank mid early with some creative gank paths. Niski and Isma have been a duo, and it feels like this has been their only strategy for a very long time. Yeah, but I felt like they kind of cut back on it a bit and they tried to use yeah. Isma elsewhere again. But I thought they were really creative with a gang pattern of full clearing topside, where they move up towards Crux in the beginning and then Isma paths around the river instead of going through Raptors, which is usually warded. And it opened up so many punishes on VTO that was pushed up initially that gave them an avenue for a lead. And then you bring it over to Yankos. And I would love to highlight some gangs here from Yankos. But I can't. So here you get some 4x speeds of his jungle clearing, which was, yes, he had a lot of priority to play around with. Yes, they got neutral objectives with it, but that was all they got with it. And you want more out of it. And, and it feels like it was a very muted early game, maybe in part as well, too, due to those drafts. I feel like you don't have the tools to make bot side volatile. We had the Alice to pick into the Nautilus as a tool down bot side, but it's pretty hard to utilize proactively. It's more of a pick that can survive any kind of Nautilus engage. So maybe something like, you know, that can invade potentially with the volume or something like a Camille, you know, maybe yeah. pull that out. Yeah, and it's so rough, right, Red? They cut it off here, yeah. right? Adam comes through with a TF ultimate, and they still lose yeah. out on the first objective. And, and once again, like, I don't think it's a Yank issue at all. I think the Alistar is well paired up with the Volibear into the Nautilus, while Isolated is usually good. But in terms of locking down the Seri, finding the tower dives, and them not pulling the trigger, we need more proactivity from Team Eretix, because they are a good team. On paper, they should be beating SK today as well. Yeah. But from what we saw in playoffs, it was it was lacking. And it can come from the bot lane as well, because Flaked is the least AD carries of all the AD carries I know. I feel like I think it's going to be an interesting matchup coming up against Exekick. These two bot laners can look completely different, whether it's from Champion Ball, but also the impact that they have for their teams, I feel. Yeah, it, it, go ahead, Gibby. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I completely agree, but I also think they're so different. Like, Flacket has some versatility with the early game AD carries. We've seen the Callista wanting to punish in the 2v2. Yeah. 2v2. We've seen the Sever Senna and Yasuo, where Exekick traditionally is a bit more of the hyperscaling crit AD carry player when he was best um, as well in winter all the way back. That was also either the Lucian or the Jinx meta with the failures as well they could rally around. So I think there's going to be two different stylistics where one is laid back, let's scale, and one should be let's punish in the early game. And that's hoping what we see. Eyes on jungle and bot lane then in this first match but let's hear from SK's Swiffer ahead of this series. I hope he's going to be okay today. Poor guy. <laughs> thank you very much, Lore and Swiffer. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Ahead of your best off versus team Heretics. I'm going to dive straight in. There have been allegations that your drafts are blunt. They have no salt. They have no pepper. You throw <laughs> in a Camille and you think you're out of it? Yeah. Um, look, I think, I think we've just kind of found what is good for us. Um, yeah, you can criticize it for being bland or, or anything or whatever it is, but um, I think I think the read is perfectly okay. I think that there are teams that are following the exact same formula as well as in like in our region um, and just executing it slightly better. Um, I will say I think the game three draft against Vitality was uh, pretty pretty tragic. Um, I'll cop that one. That's that's fair. Uh, but aside from that, I think that they've been very easy win conditions. Um, really similar to like very similar to what we're playing in scrim so we're hitting all like similar beats uh on stage and i think that that's what's the most important i don't really care about seasoning to be honest as long as we just as long as we just win i don't care <laughs> simple and steady wins yeah. the race stick to your fundamentals i guess and just play yeah. proper front to back now talking about fundamentals and seasons last split you guys had the exact same trajectory as you're having right now you faced yeah. team vitality in the first best of series lost to them, mm -hmm. a little bit more convincingly back then than you yeah. did right now, and then ended up playing the Team Heretics that you've got today as well. Any yeah. predictions on if this is going to end up the same way as well, in Well, yeah, last bracket, I think we ended up losing 2-0 to Vitality rather convincingly. Um, and this time it was 1-2, and that's that's character growth, um, if nothing else. So I'm expecting, instead of 2 one uh Heretics today, it's a 2-0. That's That seems to be that seems to be the narrative, the storyline there. So let's let's go for it. However, Swiffer, if you 2-0 <laughs> them, yep. how are we going to get cam reactions from you? 
We need those camera reactions yeah. from you, Swiffer. Yeah. And what has been going on with them? Because you told me you're trying to tone them down, but they're just coming out naturally. I, mean, I can I can have happy reactions too, no? Uh, but um, the are they really the same? Yeah. Look, I've been I've been trying to tone it down. Um, apparently, I just have absolutely no self control. So. <laughs> But I'm 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 aware I'm aware of it and um yeah it's a it's a work in progress just like just like everything else. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sweeper. Best of luck, you know, best of us, Team Heretics. Thank you. Draco and Dangda, take us into the game.